Uh, that Stuff they that, have, they, that he did that was bad that they had documentation of. That they caught him uh, uh, on trips to Russia and neighboring states doing nefarious things. That's the PP tape he's referring to as nefarious things. And that they have evidence to back it up and that he, that he effectively fell victim to a Russian trap. This is the allegation. Mm -hmm. And that they've assembled this, this, this file of compromising information on him and that they're just waiting at any moment to either use it or use it to blackmail him so that he is sort of a puppet. I've heard these allegations for a long time. I've heard very, very specific allegations, times, places, amounts of money, specific activities. I haven't been able to prove any of it. This, uh, You've these been allegations, chasing this story to see I've if chased, you can document it. I've called people in, in, in Russia. I've called uh, leading experts. I've chased, tried to chase it down in this country. And I'm not the un only one. Other reporters have been given this kind of uh, material and have been looking into it and haven't been able to prove it. And I, and I called some of the sources who were sending this my way, and I said, okay, you have this material. You say it's as compromising as it is. Show me the proof. Mm -hmm. Show me these tapes that supposedly exist. Show me the records of the money that was supposedly paid. All of these things, that these allegations that, if true, would be incredibly compromising. So far, I haven't been able to find anything. So why, so is, what's this, interesting, why is this coming out now, then? So that's what's the interesting thing. There are a lot... So, so he just debunked it. He just debunked it for her. Right. That it's there's nothing in this can be verified, Rachel. I've tried people who are trying getting me to try to report this stuff. I asked them for proof. They have none. He just debunked it. She's going to ignore that. And now he's going to say they're going to talk about why is this coming out right now? So this is right as he was becoming president. So here we go. Rumors. These rumors have been circulating for months now. Why would the intelligence community then today boil it down to two pages and drop it like a bomb on President-elect Trump, on many senior leaders in, in Washington, yeah. and on the president himself's lap. Why do it right now? And that's the question. I was told by a senior intelligence source that the reason they did it is the intelligence community is angry. The intelligence community effectively wants... So what Chuck Schumer said to Rachel Maddow on her own show that... the. Trump should not say bad things about the intelligence community because they have six ways to Sunday to get you back. This is what they he meant. This is the CIA, the intelligence community, putting Trump on notice that you better not F with us because we can screw you over. That's what this is. He's telling Rachel Maddow that she completely ignores it. Watch this. Put him on notice saying, look, you're you're saying all these things about Russia. Be careful. There are all these allegations out there. Are any of them true? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told, quote, we can't help you, Mr. Trump, unless you tell us more. We need more uh, input. These from allegations you. are out there. We need to know if we need to be taking care of this. And, and wow. lastly, that there was a concern that these allegations just in themselves could become a distraction and make it difficult for him to to govern. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be true for you to blackmail somebody with it. Right. I mean, I guess but that's I would treat them. As no, that's that's how blackmail works, Rachel. You, you're a Rhodes Scholar. You know that it has to be true or else it's not blackmail. It's just a smear. That, that's the difference between blackmail and a smear. Blackmail is mean you have something that they actually did. And that's why you got the goods on them. So she again gaslights and then she ends the interview. Watch. Stage with a lot of caution. NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Richard. That's it. The guy just came on, blew the roof off this stupid story, and she can't get him off her show. She doesn't go, wait a minute. None of this stuff can be verified. She doesn't say that. She goes, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be true to be blackmailed. And that's why Rachel Maddow is a liar of the highest order. She's not just getting it wrong. She's a liar. And she he was telling her that the CIA... The intelligence services, the unelected security state officials who comprise the quote unquote deep state, which was. And not only did Rachel and MSNBC and her little group of friends over there not exercise any uh, any caution at all in terms of accepting the CIA claims at face value and pretending as though this dossier had more veracity than it ever did. They then invited the very people in the security state to come into their news organization as paid contributors. So they wanted to merge John Brennan 
the director of the CIA, one of the most longest tenured security state officials in the entire country, who you know lied about you know lied drone bombings and everything under Obama, they rehabilitated him beyond his wildest dreams and imbued him with the moral authority of being this kind of principled Trump critic when all he was ever doing was acting on behalf of the CIA, one of the most tarnished entities that has ever existed on the face of Earth. So the level of media malfeasance here, again, Jimmy, is just breathtaking. There are so many elements. You can't wait whitewash history. I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves. Anyway, the day after Mueller's findings... Isakoff and Korn were on MSNBC with Chris Hayes. And Chris Hayes, you know, to his credit, I think Chris has not done a very good job at all throughout this ordeal. <laughs> but he asked Korn and, and Isakoff to reflect on whether this dossier, which, again, they championed, they injected into the American media bloodstream, did Mueller's lack of indictment, lack of a finding of a conspiracy. And by the way, Mueller didn't just not find a conspiracy. He didn't just say that there's not ample evidence to Right. For a conspiracy. Right. He proactively and affirmatively right. posited and declared that no conspiracy existed. So he took an extra declaratory step to dispel it once and for all after 22 months of intensive investigation with some of the most aggressive prosecutors in America. All you know, untold numbers of subpoenas, early morning raids, you know, uh, search warrants. Request that out to foreign intelligence services. I mean, he could not be more exhaustive than Mueller apparently was. And he affirmatively and proactively declared no collusion, more or less. So after all that, David Korn and Isakoff were on Chris Hayes, and they basically admitted, more or less, that the Steele dossier was a fraud. Now think of that. The Steele dossier animated two plus years of the Steele dossier was always looming in the background around this Trump-Russia issue. There was always... So let me also say this. People don't know this about the dossier. Is So the, the accusation against Trump was always that Trump was colluding with a foreign power to get negative information, damaging information on Hillary Clinton, and that would make him a traitor. What Hillary Clinton actually did was contract a foreign spy, Steele, and what Steele did was call Kremlin people inside the Kremlin and ask for negative information on Donald Trump. He did the exact same thing that they were accusing Trump of doing, and the Hillary Clinton campaign funded that. Now, the difference is, they'll say, is that, yeah, Hillary Clinton paid for that information from people inside the Kremlin, and Trump didn't. And that's why what Trump did is traitorous. Well, he didn't do that. But... That's literally what this whole thing was hanging on. And I couldn't believe that they would hang. Like, no one knows that Hillary Clinton colluded with Russia to get negative information on Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton colluded with Russia to get negative information on Donald Trump. I'll say it again. Hillary Clinton colluded with a foreign spy and the Kremlin to get negative information on her political opponent in the presidential race. Nobody says that. That's exactly what happened. And then Hillary Clinton lied that she funded that for an entire year. She lied to investigators. Trump's Republican opponents in the primary in 2016 had you know, been, you know, been in cahoots with Fusion GPS, um, which you know, then eventually culminated in the Steele dossier. It's not to say that they funded the dossier per se, but they were. more and more information came out that disproved various elements of the dossier. And so a responsible media would have communicated to readers and viewers and so forth yes. that yes. the Steele dossier was losing credibility by the day, yes. whether it was the claim about Prague. Remember, yes. okay, so Michael, Michael Cohen supposedly went to Prague. That was a core. That was like a crux. That was a central issue in the Steele dossier. Never any evidence for it. McClatchy had some, you know far-fetched report where they claim they had like cell phone pings that placed Michael Cohen and in, in, in Prague it was never corroborated and Michael Cohen himself then emphatically denied it under oath when he testified before Congress a couple weeks ago or last month or whenever that was and people said oh maybe there's still this outside chance that he actually did go to Prague even though he turned against Trump and was like giving all the dirt on Trump 
in that hearing. Right. So he had absolutely zero incentive to lie about the Prague thing, but they just kept on it because they were so emotionally invested in the dossier and the wider Trump narrative. And the dossier was like a foundational, it's almost like a, a sacred text for them. Yes. So it was like a truthy document. It was never intended for public consumption per steel. The only reason that it entered circulation officially was because he had it handed off to John McCain's associate and brought to the United States. And then John McCain passed it along to the FBI. I mean, this whole web of tangled ties is so crazy to think about when you have a little distance from it. But like John McCain was a prime mover of this entire narrative and his ghost is still haunting the U.S. because, you know, without him, we may never have had Trump Russia in the way that it actually manifested. But the point is, here's the media failure element. A responsible media would have been communicating to the public that the Steele dossier was losing credibility by the moment, but they communicated the opposite. In order to understand that the Steele dossier was falling apart, you had to read conservative media. Yeah. The FBI, CIA, cabal of unelected national security officials launching an investigation on false pretenses, and nobody in the, quote, progressive media had any interest in getting to the bottom of it because it like seemed to reflect poorly on Trump, even though now that it actually emboldened Trump and gave him huge leverage, he's going to be using it in, a, in a potent way for his 2020 messaging. Yes. And well, he's every right to do so because he was correct. So, and that should be, that's painful. Should, that's painful for people to admit, but they need to admit it. They need to get a grip, stop lying, stop the distortions. This has gone on long enough. Move on, admit that you were complicit in an error of monumental proportions and pick up the pieces and see what we can do to move forward. It's kind of two bit nobodies like Carter Page and George Papadopoulos and, you know, all these ridiculous minor figures who got, you know, held up as pivotal players in this international espionage drama. Maybe we should exercise journalistic discretion and be more cautious. They threw caution to the wind. There were all these resistance warriors against Trump. They thought that their journalistic responsibilities came second to just opposing Trump. And hey, I'm all for opposing Trump, but it's got to be rational. It's got to be fact based. And it can't just be this resistance sloganeering crap because you want to assume the worst possible thing about this guy who won, not because he was an asset of Russia or he was compromised, but because American political institutions have been systematically discredited for good reason for decades yes. because people don't feel that their fortunes are being reflected by their government. That's why somebody as outlandishly grotesque as Donald Trump could get as far as he did, and they didn't want to reckon with that fundamental reality. They wanted to latch on to this fantasy fairy tale, and now it's come back to bite them, and you know, as well it should. They should feel embarrassed because you are embarrassing. You committed a fraud on a massive scale. And I know you want to pretend now like it was no big deal and nobody really believed it. Uh, but people, I know people who got depressed and manic and felt like they were in this kind of fever dream state because of these cynical cowards and what they did. And they just can't be like they can't. We can't let them get away with you it. You just point to the aggressive progressives and say, I've been funding this a show on my network that's been getting this right day in and day out from this to Syria to Venezuela to the stupid Guardian story about Manafort visiting Julian Assange that they've never retracted to that stupid BuzzFeed. The whole thing, that stupid BuzzFeed story, they still haven't retracted that story at BuzzFeed. Those guys still haven't been fired. They oh, laid off. And Mueller, Mueller definitively bunked that one. I mean, yeah, so it was already debunked by Cohen when he testified before Congress, right? But if the BuzzFeed story was true, because the BuzzFeed story, and we're getting on a tangent now, but I don't care. The BuzzFeed story claims that Mueller possessed evidence that Trump directed Cohen to lie to Congress. The FBI and the Department of Justice contemplated extralegally removing the president in 2017. They contemplated launching a coup on false pretenses to remove the duly elected president. And no liberals cared. I tried to get them care. I wrote columns about it. I tweeted about it. Nobody cared. But as a group, journalists totally fall down on the job every couple of years, if not constantly. And it's because they're owned by the people they're supposed to be investigating and exposing. That's the problem. If you work at the Washington Post, you're never going to do great work on Amazon.com or Jeff Bezos or the CIA or our foreign policy. You're never going to do that because Jeff Bezos doesn't want you doing it. You're a puppet of Jeff Bezos. And if you work at the New York Times, it's the same. Another billionaire who owns you. It's just billionaires who are, want their opinions 
to be forwarded by journalists. Chomsky taught us that. This isn't me making this up. And all those people know that they're manufacturing consent, Michael, and they don't give a sh So I don't really have any respect for almost anybody in journalism.